So thank you very much, Angus, for the very interesting presentation. Um, now we have the session for the discussion. Uh, you can uh, just unmute your microphone and ask any questions or give any comments that you might have. When you do so, please briefly state your name and affiliation. Or if you don't have the ability to speak, uh, you can also write into the chat and we will out, uh, read out the question uh, or the comment and uh, put it in this way into the discussion. So if nobody has an immediate question right now, you know this is always so it takes a little bit of time for people to get warm with this. I would like to start asking an initial question, which is um, um, you. I'll just go go some slide back because I don't see. I don't remember where it was. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, right. Um, so you were suggesting to have uh, annotations at, uh, dot, at the document, to, to have IDs uh, unique at the document level. What do you mean by that? Do you mean that people assign unique document IDs? Or I didn't really understand that question. Can you maybe elaborate on that briefly? Yes. Yes, I'll elaborate. So what I mean is that um, annotations that link um, some target uh, so some piece of text, for example, the annotations that are linking some piece of text to um, something about that piece of text, so um, they themselves need to have some unique identifier. So if you go back a couple of slides, please, to the one that's showing the example one, that's it. So here you go. So in this case here we have an annotation, which is a piece of funding that's related to some piece of text, funding information related to text. And in there we have several um, identifiers. The annotation itself has an identifier highlighted in red annotation URI. Um, and then the, uh, the specific um, body of it, there's a result URI in there. And then the individual parts of the annotation graph, if you like, so the funding information themselves have unique identifiers, have URIs, or within the standard they'd have URIs. Now, some um, creators of end-to-end -end text mining systems um, may not, I believe, may not um, uh, have the um, capabilities to define unique um, identifiers, define URIs. So one possibility was that we allow people to assign identifiers, these URIs, assign identifiers that are unique within the scope of this document alone. So they may just be simple numbers. So one, two, three in these cases. Um, and that that Open Minted then provides some way of, of taking those identifiers that are unique within the scope of this document and making them uh, unique resource identifiers globally. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure if that's the answer. I don't know, perhaps other people have a, um, some way of resolving this or some other thoughts on it. Okay, so we have a comment from Hidya Aras on that. Um, uh, how do you plan to store the annotations in the open minted system? Is there a central repository distributed depending uh, based on the workflow or how is that imagined to be? Okay, so um, other people from Open Minted should also comment on this because I, I don't know all the details of this. Um, but we we would expect to store, um, we have a, a, a registry system with an underlying storage capability. So the registry would make available um, documents and uh, the annotations that have been created on those documents. There's open questions as to how we store um, intermediate annotations and so on, and, and at what point in some workflow we might store annotations. But um, clearly, the document that's been annotated and the final annotations would be available through that registry. But other people from the consortium who have more, who know more about that should comment as well. 
Uh, this is Richard. A uh, brief comment maybe. There is um, a policies document from Open Minted in the work that um, will likely address such questions as how long will data be retained, what is the quality of service to be expected, is Open Minted supposed to be a repository system or, uh, or used for processing data and storing it temporarily and after that people will be expected to download it. Um, these, things, these questions are out there and uh, we are working on um, on resolving them and on seeing what is possible, um, what what we can actually support as a project. I just can ask a question uh, with regards to your first uh, question. Actually, um, so there was um, uh, I didn't really understand it. I mean, I understand that funding, for example, is associated with the document. But I would kind of imagine that there are many other types of like, semantic types of annotations which are which would be, which for which it wouldn't be logical to associate the, the document. I mean, for example, if you are trying to um, represent arguments in research literature, then I think um, the the argumentation is happening often across documents even. And if you're, for example, discussing related work in a particular section, you also don't necessarily want to link it to the document because it's some sort of an argumentation. Um, there are probably many other examples. Is it not the case that what we want to, what, what should be enabled is uh, linking, uh, that it, you know, depending on the type of the annotation that is made, it is linked to either the document level or, I don't know, the phrase level or any other sensible level? Yes, I think you're correct, absolutely. I think the, the point I was trying to make was that we, we can't always assume that um, the annotation will be linked to something at the textual level and to specific offsets within the text, whether that is uh, to a, a an entity in the text or a section, a paragraph, or whatever. But yes, absolutely, we need to be able to support all of those. Um, and uh, we can do that with both the uh, our, our XMI interchange, which is, is very strong on that point and is designed around exactly that, but also within web annotation as well, um, it's possible to define selectors for specific parts of documents depending on offset. So you, you can define a, a part of a document and associate annotations with that. And then a system that's making use of that can focus as appropriate. Absolutely. Okay, uh, Angus, I have a question. Maybe I, I misunderstood something. Um, if I understand well, we're going to have two ways of interchange. One is the XMI and the other one is the web annotation. So is there going to be at some point um, a linking or an interchange between the two? I mean, if you have a service that has as an output XMI, will it also have some representation in the web annotation uh, way or not? So, yes, I mean, I think we have to work through this more fully, but I think that anything that, um, that could be represented in XMI, we can probably represent in web annotation and vice versa. But the way, the way I see it is that the web annotation is, um, is more likely something that we provide as an output format uh, from an end-to-end -end system. So as opposed to what to the interoperation between internal components of the system where we would more likely to use or we, where we will use um, mm -hmm. XMI um, but yeah I think I think it would be possible to uh, convert from one to the other and indeed mm -hmm. I suppose that internally that's exactly what things will have to do though that may be hidden from end users to if an internal system is working with XMI, the, the, the final stage will have to present something in um, web annotation. And in fact, we did some experiments last week where we created a uh, representation of this funding in both. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, uh, another question. Uh, what happens with, um, uh, okay, with, uh, system services that do not have, as you say, as you uh, as um, funding uh, information services that we've just seen, will we um, somehow uh, point to ontologies that could be used? Will, how will we 
get them from uh, these simple type uh, annotation types that they're using to ontologies or to external knowledge resources. Will there be some kind of a recommendation for specific information or what? Okay, so I think this is actually quite uh, quite a tricky question because it's, it's very tempting to say that yes, we will, but then when you come across um, an area such as funding, for example, which I've never come really come across before, I never really looked at this area, there are you know there are, there are clearly standards and ontologies that people are using out there, mm -hmm. and I don't know as somebody from outside that field which ones are, they are, which ones are being used, which ones are not being used, and mm -hmm. so on. What makes sense um, within our own consortium? Absolutely, you know we have we have people from the um, uh, social sciences, from agriculture, from life sciences, and so on. And as you know, as a as a consortium, we need to, and it's one of the things I put on my life science as next steps, we need to um, engage in order to perhaps make recommendations in those areas, but I don't think we can be, um, uh, we, we, we can't, uh, sorry I've forgotten the word, but we, we, we can't be too strict about this because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's essentially it's the domain that needs to decide what ontologies and what standards that domain ad adopts. It's, I don't think we can do that um, entirely ourselves as a text mining consortium. So we should encourage people to, uh, to, to build these sorts of standards and, and so on where they don't exist in communities where they already exist, then we should be pointing people to the ones that are already there and already in use, making use of the you know, knowledge we have within our consortium for that. Yes, I think that's important because I mean I, I I don't know anything about finding ontologies as well. And as you were talking, I googled it a bit, and there's quite a few finding ontologies out there, not just the the one that you sent, but some others as well. So we might need some sort of listing of uh, all these possible ontologies in the registry, as we have already discussed, and ask people to to populate it. Yes, that's true. So we should we should provide that capability for people. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, when you know, next week somebody's going to come up with a new area that's never been text mined before, um, and they're going to want to do text mining in that area, and we may not be able to say anything about it ourselves. So we need to give people the tools to be able to describe the resources that they are already using. So as you say in the registry, in the, the open minded registry, people need to be able to. Um, uh, populate that with the things that are being used in their domain. Thank you. Thanks, Angus. So I might, uh, oh, here's Richard again from the Darmstadt. I'll ask an, a follow-up question on that. So um, what about, I mean, there is obviously a tension between interoperability and being able to allow people to just use their own ontologies or ways of describing things. So what do you think is the balance between that we could aim for? Uh, okay, so so I don't think we can exclude people um, because they're failing to uh, interoperate at that level. If you know, the people might be uh, new to an area providing some new service, um, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We can just encourage them, I think. Um, and I think make the point that whilst they might interoperate at some syntactic level, uh, they they also need to consider interoperating at the semantic level as well. And that a, a service that they're providing that fails to um, to consider the knowledge level, or consider semantics, and to consider other work in their domain, is only going to interoperate at a limited level, and that it, that they should um, attempt to interoperate at a semantic level as well, and therefore uh, should either look to what's already available in their community, or if there's nothing in their community, they should look to um, uh, perhaps starting initiatives that can create um, resources and ontologies. But I, 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 I guess personally, I'd be quite wary of, um, of, of uh, 
making it an absolute requirement. And I think, you know, therefore we, we should allow people to um, uh, to have to define things more loosely and only interoperate at a syntactic level as long as long as we make it clear to people that that's all they're doing. I mean, for you know, for example, the the funding resource that I showed, if we were to host that now, which you know we, we could and probably will do, then then actually that's only going to um, operate at a level of semantics that's defined by the people who created it, um, and at a fairly fairly basic semantic level. Uh, but I I don't think the way to bring them in and encourage them to uh, to move beyond that is to say that well actually no you can't take part and, until you've um, considered that and done that and perhaps you have um, different levels of interoperation if you like so you know you can imagine bronze silver goals or one star two star three star whatever and the level at which you interoperate um, varies according to how um, how much you take on board our guidelines. So may I ask another question? This is Peter from Open University. Um, so what I was wondering is um, um, what we would like to have is obviously achieve an interoperability on for the open access content, for the underlying open access content, as well as probably the commercial content in the future. So what we would like to, what we would need to do is to get the publishers for probably to either enable us to text and data mine their literature or um, get them exposed actually some of these uh, uh, some of these um, uh, annotations as well in the same format as we do and for example uh, there was this nice um, uh, nice example is I think the grant funding you know, we want um, it can be text mined from the acknowledgement sections and then exposed do you what do you think is the way to um, make them uh, consider interoperating with us actually because we are going to do something, we're going to propose an annotation standard, but I mean, how do we influence them really? So I think one thing we can do is um, is to make the point that by, by interoperating that they uh, can potentially enrich their own content and clearly they would want to um, uh, be able to put their own boundaries on how that happens, but you, you, you see it already with um, things like Europe PMC where uh, and, and, and commercial providers as well do a very similar thing where they, they'll allow text miners to create annotations and um, provide them uh, to back to the content providers so the content providers can then make them available to their end users. Um, so I, I, I've not, not fully explored it, but I think the, the Europe PMC model seems to be going very much in that direction. And I know that Elsevier have been working in this direction for quite some time as well. So being able to provide an open platform that allows them to connect with um, with text miners throughout Europe, um, I think, I, I don't know, but I, I suspect as would be a very, very um, useful thing for many content providers. Okay, thank you. So here's Richard again from the Darmstadt. So we are basically mm, suggesting to people to use two different syntactic formats, but we, but the, the actual semantics are let's say underspecified and left open for, for the individual domains to fill. Um, so basically there's, uh, there's kind of a market in which different communities act and they can publish their, their own domain conceptualizations and register them in the registry. And uh, hopefully people will be able to find things that already exist instead of reinventing things. Um, so that's helpful. Um, but probably there is going to be uh, parallel development in, even if we take into account now what, what Penny was saying about the availability of multiple funding ontologies. So do you think that the platform should offer facilities to uh, overcome differences between different conceptualizations of the same domain? 
And if so, what could these facilities look like? Yes, that's interesting. So you're suggesting that uh, I, I'd say I've never considered this. I don't think if it's I'm not sure if it's been discussed within the project, but you're suggesting that we somehow provide um, services for people to allow for, to allow domains to be able to um, reach consensus and um, and and so on on their own conceptualizations. Yeah, is that what you're suggesting? Well, I'm not suggesting anything in particular. I'm laying out that there's probably going to be um, uh, parallel development, and there are many ways, I guess, that uh, that we could address this. One one that you could that you just brought up is managing the social consensus pro process, which would be quite interesting. Um, I guess there could also be technical solutions, not not social solutions. But yeah, I mean, could you could you share with us an opinion of what what types of uh, of facilities you could imagine um, the the project to to provide here to to the users or, or to the communities? So I think by the very act of providing a registry um, and allowing people to uh, put things in it and look at what's already there, then we're already starting to provide um, impetus in that direction, in the direction of people. Uh, arriving at uh, consensus, but also within the domains that where we we do have um, strong user communities already within within our project, then then absolutely we we should make recommendations. I, I guess I'm just um, just wary of the fact that outside of that we may not have expertise, and that um, there there may be areas that that. Uh, find what we're doing useful who aren't part of one of our um, existing communities that are making um, strong recommendations that, that we as a consortium um, uh, back up, but they're, they're starting to um, develop in this area perhaps. And in those cases, then allowing them to look at what's already there um, is already, I think, a, a good first step. Having um, uh, I guess sets of perhaps we should develop sets of um, principles and so on that they can um, follow in order to uh, ensure that they're not replicating work and um, <clears throat> to ensure that they are looking for what's already available. Um, uh, beyond that, I'm not. It's very difficult to know what you can make a, a, a new set of users that we, you know you never had any input from before. It's difficult to know what you can. Um, Get them to do. Actually, I'm not sure. I appreciate other opinions from people on this. How do you do? How would you deal with that? Well, I guess making things discoverable is is probably the first good step. We have seen that happening in in ISOCAT for linguistic concepts mostly, um, um, but there could probably be a separate discussion on whether that effort was successful or or not. I mean, even if there is, if, if something already exists, the question is always about: Does it fit? Does what what somebody else did fit my actual use case, or do I have to extend it? If, in that respect, um, RDF and the, the semantic web approach is probably quite helpful because it has a very high degree of compos compositionality. Um, so that sounds all re quite reasonable. Um, but uh, so anyway, so people people will then use use the syntactic uh, representation that that is recommended, and um, and they they will have either some they will follow either some pre predefined uh, schemes or might be defining their own. It comes to another question, which is um, what level of interaction. Had, could could or should the platform provide um, just on the syntactic level? So, for example, is it is it possible to to visualize results um, of of text and data mining output, like of the funding output, for example, uh, by not knowing anything about the the actual data structure, just knowing the syntax? Can we do something useful with that? Um, or, or do is there the expectation that the people will pick up the raw data 
and uh, further process, visualize, uh, integrate it outside of the platform. So I think uh, there's a, there's, to some extent we can provide tools um, that, that could operate at just a syntactic level. Um, so just operating at a very simple level of, of key value pairs, there's probably quite a lot you can do with that, so sorting and counting and so on. And, and for some applications and some end users, that may well be enough. Um, I, I guess you know what's happening at the moment is lots of people are taking this stuff and using it outside of uh, whatever they're creating it in at the moment. Um, so th I'm, I've no doubt that that will continue. Uh, it, it's been perfectly possible to visualize things at a very basic level, and as I say, to do aggregation and so on without knowing the underlying semantics, but clearly the more semantics is, that is available, the more you can do. Coming back to your earlier point, actually, as well, about um, uh, you know, in, interoperability and to what extent we encourage people to use um, existing standards or enforce those. I mean, it's, I suppose it's not just about uh, people looking to um, to main resources, is it? I mean, the, we can encourage people to also look at uh, standards for um, representing their lexicons and so on, and and using uh, standards such as the the ones that are coming out of Ontelex, um, the Ontelex Group, Lemon, and so on, and encourage people in those directions would be uh, of of benefit too, and the you know LMF and so on. So I think even even if people within a particular domain haven't got um, full rich conceptualizations, there's still uh, an extent to which they can take part in the um, linked data world. Okay, thank you, Angus. I would like to encourage anybody who still has some question or comment to ask to speak up. Otherwise, um, it would be probably the time to conclude the call, but if anybody still has anything, please use your chance before we wrap up. Angus, do you have any final notes to make before we wrap up? Um, no, only to say thank you to everyone for joining us. Um, and once again, apologies for the technical difficulties we had early on. Um, I hope you managed to see and hear everything and that uh, you found the webinar um, interesting and um, I encourage you all to uh, continue to talk to Open Minted um, Consortium and to collaborate with us in this direction and help us to um, continue to develop our ideas. Thank you Angus, thank you all the participants who have uh attended the call and who have contributed to the discussion it was very interesting and um, we will make this recording available soon through the Plaster Foster platform and through YouTube and uh, you will be informed once the video is online. It will take a couple of days because we do some post-processing um, and yeah we hope it was very interesting for you and see you again in a different venue.